there's a new movement in American music actually called the Third Stream, which mixes the rivers of jazz with other rivers that flow down from the highbrow, far out mountain peaks of 12 tone or atonal music. Third Stream is a term that I coined in the late 50s, which uh, was to describe the music that was coming in at that time, combining jazz and classical music, both the most advanced classical music and the most uh, advanced jazz techniques. And uh, Don certainly uh, fitted into that kind of uh, uh, an approach to music. So uh, the program that I suggested uh, to Lenny, or part of it anyway, was a work of mine called Journey into Jazz, which was for um, narrator and uh, a symphony orchestra, small orchestra, and uh, a five-piece jazz group. And the protagonist of the story is a trumpet player who starts out as a classical trumpet player, and during the course of the story, he develops into a major jazz musician. But the story is about the trials and tribulations of how he got from the classical, to, from rather, rather square kind of playing, and uh, increasingly better as a jazz improviser. caused Donald to be hired for this gig. And there he was working with Leonard Bernstein. In my piece, by the way, uh, Lenny, who would have normally conducted, he, you know, he liked to, he was quite an actor and, and he loved doing narration. So he did the narration and I end up, ended up conducting the New York Philharmonic. And, uh, and so Don was the premier soloist in my piece and also in Larry Austin's piece, he had a fiercely difficult part that was almost all written. There was some improvisation uh, and inc incredibly complex rhythms. But Don, by that time, was specializing in odd meters, you know, constant changes of meter and, and, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, harmonically very complex ideas that he could improvise in. I was starting already in the mid-40s, a composer who was working in very advanced uh, harmonic styles, uh, what's called the atonal style, and in 12-tone technique, and all kinds of influences from Stravinsky and Schoenberg and other modernists of the early 20th century. Now, in jazz, those that music, those traditions, those techniques, those uh, concepts of music making, had not yet really gotten very far in jazz. I mean, the most advanced music in 1950, let's say, in jazz was what we call bebop music, which was still basically tonal music. But uh, here I was writing atonal music, highly chromatic music, and without key centers uh, in this sort of new language that, the, that Schoenberg and Berg and Weber and, and Stravinsky developed. And uh, here comes along a trumpet player, I think he was the first one that I heard who could do that, who was playing basically already in atonality, just as Ornette Coleman was, although in a different way, and Eric Dolphy did also. So, um, and I was always on the lookout for uh, uh, new players, younger players, who could play in my own music.
that was that was a great moment we had together. By the way, on the on that concert was also Eric Dolphy, Benny uh, Benny Golson, and uh, and Richard Davis, who was at that time also one of the along with Scott LaFaro, one of the most advanced bass players. So this was quite a the and uh, Joe Cocuzzo was was the drummer in in those pieces, and. Um, so that that was that was probably our our most important collaboration